So have you ever wanted to take your $3,000 motion platform and suspend it in the air? There you go. It's our little magic trick here. You can see there's, there's nothing under it. Um, there, everything's just kind of dangling around here. You can actually kind of push it, move it around. Don't like doing that too much, but uh, yeah. There you go. Not nerve-wracking at all. Welcome everyone to another edition of Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. So I've got a question for you. Have you ever meant to run to the store real quick just to pick something up and ended up spending the rest of the day out shopping and running errands? Well, that's kind of what my experience has been like with the DOF Reality H6 and the SFU upgrades. For those of you that have been watching the channel, you know we got an upgrade uh, way back in April and we've been putting it together ever since. And I've been basically wanting to put this video out of all the modifications that we went through and tell the story of how we ended up upgrading the H6. Now, to be fair, we were one of the first ones to get the upgrade. We got a pre-production unit. We knew what we were getting into. So in, this in no way reflects on DOF Reality as a company. This is just our journey <laughs> and what we ran into trying to upgrade this thing. So. I've uh, been trying to get this video done for a while, but it seemed like every time I thought it was time to shoot it, we'd run into another issue. So we're going to kind of talk about how the uh, experience was and what we did with the DOF Reality H6 to finally get it in this state where it is amazing. Let me just tell you right now, always, always, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. We're just sharing with you our experience and how we went about building it but always refer back to the DOF Reality official instructions whenever uh, constructing a motion platform or doing an upgrade like this. So, first off, we had to start with a way to figure out how to upgrade the thing. So you're basically pulling the whole base off of it um, to get the motors and everything off. So, well, how do you do that? Do you disassemble the whole unit? I left it up to Daryl, the master fabricator, and he came up with this unique solution. He got us some Unistrut, and built some scaffolding that we were able to actually suspend the entire motion platform in the air and then pull everything out from under it. It was a little, uh, little nerve-wracking to be sure, and that's what you saw at the beginning of the clip, but I trust Daryl, and at the end of the day, it all worked out and gave us the ability to actually do the change without having to disassemble the entire motion platform. So, once that was done, um, we've got the video already that talks about how we swapped the gearboxes over. So you can see that here if you're interested. So it was time to build the base. So we put the base together. And again, we used that thin neoprene rubber uh, in between all the pieces to help keep it quiet. And uh, it seems to work out because it's, it's very quiet in operation. And we got the gearboxes all hooked up, everything attached. And I was so excited to jump in the platform because we'd been working all weekend to get it built. And uh, the first thing we did was jump in. I loaded up DCS, put an F-18 on the carrier, and launched it off the uh, carrier deck on the catapult. And the first thing I heard was, whack! Psst. And I'm like, oh, no. Did I mention it was 2 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> um, we had so much more motion that it had come back and basically just took the strut completely out when it came off the catapult and hit that back strut. So that brought an end to that evening. We let DOF Reality know and they came up with a solution. They said they wanted to stack some washers in to give it some more space. Um, we came up with a better solution in the end, which I'll cover in a bit. But they also said with the new gearboxes, you don't need to have the gas struts. So they were going to send us some new ones, but they were on back order. And obviously, they're in Ukraine. So there's that whole situation you've got to consider. And um, so we went ahead and start, pulled all the gas struts off and continued to work with the motion platform. We put some um, washers in there, and it helped. But we thought, you know what? I think there's a better idea. So from my, my old racing days and, and using tie rod ends, I knew that they basically had cone spacers. Now these are the ones that we found, um, and these are actually 7 sixteenths, which are a little big for an M10 bolt, which is what holds the uh, the arms on the 
uh, motion platform. So we had to put a little bit of uh, cardboard in there to actually shim them up. But leave it to the community. Uh, Eric Bradley found some actual M10 cone spacers. So I'm going to link what he found in the description below because you're better off to use an M10 than the 716s. But the whole idea is the same. And uh, the ones he found are more of a cone like this where it's, um, you know, it doesn't have the shoulder on it. And what the idea is, uh, you actually take, you know, the cone spacer, you put the uh, tie rod end and then another cone spacer, and that allows you to have really good movement left, right, um, so it doesn't bind up. And I like that solution a lot better. So that's what he came up with. So I'd recommend that you look at those for, for uh, spacing those out and alleviating those collision issues that we're running into with the movement arms basically hitting the framework. That seemed to take care of it, and this was the final configuration that we came up with. Now, what we did notice is we were overheating the motors without the struts, so as soon as we got the replacement struts, we did the same thing with some M8 cone spacers, and these are actually 5 sixteenths, but the 5 sixteenths is close enough to an M8 that we didn't have to shim it. So you're going to need longer bolts to do this modification. This is an M8, and this is 110 millimeters. And what you're going to want to do is make sure you get fully threaded. Also, we had to get longer M10 bolts for the control arms. These are M10s, and again, you want to make sure there's no shoulder, fully threaded. And these are about 80 millimeters in length. And you probably could get away with a little bit longer. We are right at the edge with the um, washer um, and the lock nut. So maybe even go 90. It all depends on the size of your cone spacers, but I would say minimum of 80. Also try to get the same thread. Um, ours is like 1.5. That way you can reuse your nylock nuts. You don't have to buy new ones of those. And also make sure that you get a high grade. So you want to go grade 10 or better. Uh, I think these are 12.9. So make sure you don't use stainless. Uh, stainless is not a good use for this application. So make sure you get you a good bolt. Um, and then get you the cone spacers, and that will allow you to um, get those arms away from that framework and allow it to move a little more easily. One important note when you do that also, um, the right application is you should be able to move that, um, that tie rod in no matter what position the motion platform is in. So any position you've got it set in, move it to its extremes, those rod ends should still be able to move freely. Maybe if you're at a very extreme position, it might bind just a little bit um, at the extremes, but the majority of the time, that needs to be loose. That's the proper application for a tie rod end. So um, make sure you do that. Um, we ended up being able to space out both the, um, the control arms and the gas struts with this method, and it, it's worked really well. It kept it from hitting uh, the cradle and the control arms and gave us that extra little bit of space that we were looking for. So, highly recommend doing that. Um, one thing I will point out on the gas struts. So, for any of you that are upgrading from an old unit, basically watch the end of the gas strut because what they have is, it looks like an H6 thread that they've put a Healy coil on, which is not the proper way to do things. Um, the helicoils aren't really designed to be like a spacer, so you want to get these adapters. This is a little adapter that goes from an M6 to an M8. There isn't an issue if you buy new gas struts because they're all M8s. So this is only for those of you that are converting from one of the old ones. It's something to keep an eye on, make sure that you do that properly. Uh, we also recommend using some thread locker, like some blue thread locker, just to make sure everything stays. So we started testing it more. We were more careful this time. We slowly added more and more mo movement to it. And guess what? We started having frames hitting other parts at the extreme motion. So the first one was the steering wheel um, arm. The bottom of it was down so low that it would actually hit the framework with all that extreme motion. So what do you do? You take a saw and you cut that part off. And we had to drill a new hole so we still had two bolts holding that in position. Um, so we did all that, got that clearance, started working, and we cleared, uh, cleared that issue. So added a little more motion to it, and then boom! Then we started hitting 
on this lovely piece. So this is a reinforcement bar that goes down around the foot box and keeps everything uh, you know, hooked together there. Well, for the H6, you don't need all this, and we were basically hitting it here on, on the arms. So on a H3 or a P3, these are the holes that you actually mount the movement arms to, but on the H6, you don't use that. So what we did instead of cutting this down or anything, we just got a piece of angle iron and we built a brand new um, reinforcement bracket that we mounted to it and we didn't have all this extra off the end. So that was the solution there. So we finally had the motion down where it wasn't hitting itself. The framework was clearing at all the extremes and we were quite happy with that. And uh, it's like, all right, we're finally there. I can finally make the video, but wait. No, you can't. So I was inspecting it one day and I noticed some um, pieces of metal and some shavings around one of the motors. And I started inspecting a lot closer and we found the control arms. So these original um, arms, the, the, these are the parts that actually the motor moves and moves all, does all the motion, were bending. And you can see this is the original one and you can see it's bent here. Um, and we've bent it back, but the more you bend that, it's eventually going to break. So I contacted DOF, let them know the issue we're running into, and uh, a little bit later, we got a box from them that had brand new control arms to put on, and what they did is added a reinforcement gusset here. So if you have one of the early upgrade kits that is like this and doesn't have the control arm, um, you know, have that little gusset welded, make sure you keep a close eye on these and make sure they're not bending because there's not a lot of room there and if they bend too much then they start hitting um, the gearboxes they start grinding on things and it's just not a good situation so um, keep an eye on this if you don't have the ones that have the reinforcement gusset so something to watch out for so we got all that changed all fixed up got all the new control arms and everything looked great um, we were messing with the gas struts and they were doing pretty well and all of a sudden we noticed that the gas struts were starting to come loose down at the base. So you can see here, we've got the new couplers. So the new uh, redesign has these hexagonal couplers that have more threads. If you don't have these, you want to check that as well because that's a place that they can come loose. Um, make sure you get these, uh, these little hexagonal couplers and make sure you use them because it keeps those gas struts uh, in place. Now, DOF Reality again says that you don't need to use the gas struts if you don't weigh more than 300 pounds we didn't find that to be the case we were overheating the motors um, without them so we wanted to make sure we used them for your use case what i would recommend is you get some of the temperature strips that we have on each motor um, slap them on your motors and just see if you're having a heating problem or not if the motors aren't getting too hot then you're fine without them but like I said, we were running into overheating issues, so we definitely wanted to use the gas struts and make sure they were on there. So that was all the, uh, the stuff we went through for that. So at the end of the day, um, it, was a, it was a worthy upgrade. One thing that we did have to change and that you need to be aware of, again, if, if you got one of the early ones, there's some triangle pieces that go on these control arms, and they actually can go two different ways. One way the hole is actually more out to the end of the lever and the other way the mounting hole is on the inside. You want to make sure that that mounting hole is towards the inside and I've got a picture here. You want it to look like B not A. So B is the correct insulation method and that will actually alleviate some of the problems if you are having problems with the motion platform hitting itself. Um, make sure that those triangles are in the right place because that will uh, keep you from having the clearance issues that we ran into. So I also talked to DOF and if you're interested in one of these, um, you shouldn't have any of the problems that we're going through. Again, we were, uh, we were on the pre-production unit and all the new models have all the upgrades. So the, the arms have the reinforced gussets. The SFU gearboxes are already mounted to the motors. Um, they've got all the proper uh, adapters and couplers included. So if you're new to this market and you're looking at a new motion platform, don't worry about it. All the problems that we encountered have been alleviated according to DOF. So that's a good thing. I also talked to DOF Reality a little bit about um, if 
all the new systems are coming with the SFU upgrades. They said yes. So all the new motion platforms, all the H series, all have the SFU units included. They're all priced with that. And also, um, they still do allow or, or give the option of the struts. So you could actually get your unit in and then see if you're having a heating problem. If you're not, um, you don't need the struts. And if you are, you can order the struts from them. So that's kind of the uh, situation with the motion platform. It, again, it's been a long journey, but we think we're finally in a good spot. And I'm hopeful that I can get back to making regular content now that we're not chasing down problems with this thing every week. So um, we appreciate you guys checking out our content. We appreciate you spending time here. Again, if you like this immersive gaming stuff and motion platforms and virtual reality, make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. Um, also, we are live streaming now, so if you want to be notified of that, make sure you hit that little bell icon. That'll tell you when we're going to go live streaming for gaming. So um, with that, I thank you very much. And until next time, remember to get your game on.